Евгений Пригожин, the man once called Putin's chef, has begun a vocal campaign calling for the removal of military and civilian officials whom he calls corrupt thieves and for the Russian prosecutor's office to shut down access to YouTube and Google. Evgeny Prigozhin has used his long friendship with Vladimir Putin to build an eccentric and vicious career as the man the Kremlin calls on to do its dirty work. Last week, Prigozhin, who up until recently avoided the spotlight, went several steps further and showed just how influential he really is. In a series of social media posts over the past months, Prigozhin has called for the removal of General Alexander Lapin, the commander of the Russian Armed Forces Central Military, and the man in charge of most ground forces in Ukraine. Kadyrov's expressive statement maybe isn't quite my style, but I will say, well then, Ramzan, go on. All those losers to the front barefoot with machine guns. On Saturday, after Chechen warlord Ramzan Kadyrov supported Prigozhin's criticism on social media, Lapin was actually removed from his duties. The fighters that are most effective today have been through dozens of wars, but many of those so-called professionals have only learned how to click their heels, wear the right uniform and write beautiful reports, let the hard-working soldiers work towards victory and minimizing losses, and let's get rid of the slackers. Ramzan Akhmatovich knows who I'm talking about. And now Prigozhin has set his sights on the removal of St. Petersburg's governor, Alexander Beglov, calling for an investigation into allegations of state budget theft with the help of criminal records created by Governor Beglov. Today, on October 31st, 2022, I, Eugeny Viktorovich Prigozhin, sent the General Prosecutor's Office of the Russian Federation a statement requesting an investigation to the possible creation of an organized criminal ring by Governor A.T. Beglov for the purpose of plundering the state budget and enriching the corrupt officials in his entourage. Neither Beglov nor Prigozhin are pristine political angels, and as many analysts say, it's hard to take sides in a fight between a snake and a poisonous toad. But the public accusations mark a significant turn of events as Putin's chef accumulates more unaccountable power at the president's side. As Lapin eventually fell, will Biglov soon go too? In a related story, this week Evgeny Prigozhin filed more official complaints, this time in an official letter to the Russian prosecutor general's office. But instead of aiming his accusations at a corrupt politician or an incompetent officer, Prigozhin went after YouTube and Google, alleging that both companies actively censor Russian video channels and spread threats against the country. Please check the facts set forth in the statement and restrict access to YouTube.com. Please also consider the issue of recognizing unwanted activities by the American company Google LLC on the territory of the Russian Federation, which disseminated information aiming to threaten the self-defense and security of the country. Prigozhin has transformed from a shadowy man behind the walls of power into an unelected public politician with enormous influence. He now sits at the top of Putin's power vertical with a direct access to the president and a seemingly unlimited budget for his exploits. As a young man, in the 1970s, Prigozhin attended a sports boarding school and trained in cross-country scheme, but after a criminal conviction for involving teenagers in prostitution, among other crimes, he served nine years of a 12-year sentence in various Russian prisons. Upon release, after the fall of the Soviet Union, he sold hot dogs on the streets of St. Petersburg and began his lucrative career as an entrepreneur. In St. Petersburg, Prigozhin built a restaurant empire during what Putin calls the wild 90s and later got his start in government affairs with the contracts to feed VIPs at Kremlin banquets. The Petersburg native then went on to build a federal media company and a social media hacking group called the Troll Factory that published thousands of fake stories and influenced public opinion in foreign countries around the world.
But perhaps Prigozhin's crowning achievement in Russian government contracting has come as CEO of the Wagner Group, a private military company that fights alongside Russian forces in Syria, the Central African Republic and now Ukraine. Despite Russia's legal prohibition of private mercenaries, this year Prigozhin has been recruiting tens of thousands of Russian prisoners to pick up a weapon and fight a war for Putin in exchange for their freedom. That Prigozhin now leads the charge against YouTube and Google can only mean that the days of open and unrestricted access to the world's most widely used internet search engines are numbered. What purpose would an official block on YouTube serve in Russia? Now, in Russia, YouTube is no longer a space for bloggers telling about how they spend their days. If YouTube is blocked, tens of millions would lose access to quality global journalism, as well as Russian language news channels that provide an alternative to the Kremlin's propaganda. Such is the case with uh, TV Rain. Our Russian language YouTube channel serves more than 13 million unique monthly visitors with a daily live stream broadcasts and a growing archives of news and information for internet users. If Prigozhin is successful in shutting off access to YouTube, he would also succeed in helping to narrow and restrict what Russians can watch, read and hear about their own country. A complete block on YouTube would leave ordinary citizens in the dark with nothing but hours of hateful propaganda that state TV uses to hide the Kremlin's lies.